A key witness is testifying today in the trial of a woman accused of murdering her Boston police officer boyfriend. Karen Reed is accused of hitting and killing John O'Keefe with her SUV in 2022. The defense says law enforcement is framing her. Reed has plead, pleaded not guilty. CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson is with us now to discuss this and other cases. So, Jessica, witness on the stand, ATF agent Brian Higgins is on the stand today, and he's really one of the three men the defense is suggesting as an alternate suspect in the murder. What evidence are her lawyers putting forth for this? So right now, there's a lot of evidence about Higgins' relationship with Reed, and a lot, as I'm reading the reporting at this moment, about text exchanges that they had leading up to the death. Very flirtatious text exchanges where Reed asked versions of, are you interested in me? Higgins responds, are you still with O'Keefe? That's, of course, her former boyfriend who died. Um, and Higgins right now is testifying, I wasn't really sure what these text messages were about. I wasn't sure if she was trying to figure out if uh, she could put me in the middle. And so I think part of what we're hearing right now or what the jury is hearing is um, certainly allegedly helpful for Reed in the sense that, well, maybe somebody else had the motive to kill O'Keefe, but also I think is potentially implicating her in the sense that he's saying, I felt the sense that maybe she was setting me up here. So we got a lot of cases to talk about. So those interested can go to cbsnews.com to read more about that um, in our CBS Boston station in particular. But I want to ask you about the trial of doomsday conspiracy theorist Chad Daybell. He's accused of killing his wife and his then-girlfriend's two kids in Idaho. I mean, the story is, is really brutal and hard to, to read information about. Um, you know, Lori, Day, Lori Ballard Daybell has already been sentenced to life without parole. But what are you watching for in this case? So I'm watching for what the kids are saying, what Chad Daybell's kids are saying with respect to their mother's death. There's a lot of testimony that she was ill, but then there's some inconsistent testimony from the kids' friends, where the kids will say, we found her this way, for instance. We, uh, she was alone. But then we have the children's friends saying, that's not exactly what they told me right after it happened. So what I'm really looking for, and this is a complicated case because Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy, at first her death was ruled uh, by a death by natural causes. Then her body was exhumed and the prosecutor said, we think there's something suspicious there. I'm really looking for testimony surrounding her death. And I think that will weigh heavily on the jury's mind with respect to the other deaths as well. How do you think her conviction will play in? So on the one hand, you could think, well, they entered, they clearly were engaged in criminal wrongdoing together. They entered into a conspiracy and her conviction looks bad for him. On the other hand, what you could say is, well, the real person who was responsible for this has already been convicted. So I really think it depends on how the prosecution and the defense try and frame her conviction. Obviously, the defense is going to try and cut a line and say, the real person who is in charge of the killing of the kids, she has been convicted. Now, disconnect Chad Daybell from all of that wrongdoing because she acted alone. Hmm. I want to ask you about a, a trial going on in Manhattan of a high-profile politician, not former President Trump, New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez in federal court. It's going to resume next week. You know, this is sort of a confusing case potentially for the jury. I mean, we have some sort of salacious headlines, gold bars, but it also involves, you know, potentially favors for other foreign governments and, you know, a halal company. What are you looking for in this case? So I think what's really confusing for the jury is that they're really not able to hear much of the testimony. And that's because something called the speech and debate clause, which essentially immunizes lawmakers from liability based on official acts that they take, based on floor speeches that they give, uh, based on things like voting on particular bills, putting holds on bills. And so what I think is confusing for the jury and is a real hurdle for the prosecution is that what they're trying to put forward is promise of a bribe, that they're trying to say, Senator Menendez said, I will use my position on the House Foreign, excuse me, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and I will do things for you. 
So the jury hears the evidence of the promise, but then it's very difficult for him, them to hear evidence of what official action might have taken place. So that's what I'm looking for, is that I think this is a tough road for the prosecution. Hmm. All right, Jessica Levinson, thank you. Thank you.